Test one. On mute. And I'm gonna. Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll get out. I did get an email on. from Sonny. Said I'm on there. And we're gonna have to turn this this way. And turn this on. Should be able to see everybody up here. Just they won't. Hello. They won't be able to see you. I don't care.
Well, Sonny, can you hear me? Test, test, test. Hey, Sonny. Top 59 Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. 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 Six minutes. I got a phone call. Yeah, hey, uh, this is John out of the airport. Is, can somebody hear us? Hey, you know, getting all into it? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute it for a minute. I was there tonight. You got uh, welcome. Thanks. You sent me a card in the mail, too. I did. Thank you. I have it in my office. John, you. Thanks. So, yes, Mayor, we can hear you. Can you hear me? No. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There's a lot of noise going on in here, sir. What'd you say? I'm on Sonny's computer. I can hear you. Okay. Thank you now. I'm going to mute it for just a minute before we get going here. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hola. John, I can't hear you if you're talking to me, you're muted. Okay, I can hear you now. Well, you wouldn't have any of those things if it weren't. I know, I know. I'll let him have those three. Okay. Like this new Snapchat, who could use? Snapchat. I don't even have Snapchat. That's me, Dana. Good afternoon. Can you hear us, Dana? Hello. Can you hear us, Dana? Yes, sir. Hello. I can see you really up close, too. <laughs> but you can't hear? Yes, sir. I can. You can hear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Hi, Melissa. Yeah, we're going to have to speak up, everybody, because we're operating on one computer here. What kind of computer is that? It's a nice little one. That, uh, it's, a, it's a Dell. Yeah, I made a good trade with Jonathan Griffith on that. I can't even mind what. Remember when we trade computers? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? What, what's your, uh, you got the handy dandy. It was the best at one time. It was the surface. Top line, surface. surface. Yeah, yeah. That was the really best thing for me. Yeah. I said, let Jonathan have it. I'll take a little more basic situation. Trade. Remember that? That was a good trade. Jonathan, I got, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I got all everything put together for that now mm -hmm. in the new video. So, Jock, give it to who did you tell me to give it to? Uh, um, send it to Sunny and I. Well, I got to bring it down there. It's too big to send it. Yep. So, you're now a videographer or producer? Actually, I'm not. Uh, I got the school board to do it, and they did a great job. Actually, put a little music to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and complete that application tomorrow. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, that would be great. Got a lot of interest. Got a great. Clay Electric wants me to put in for a grant for it. 
if we get a supplemental grant. All right. You know, Don, they want to come out. They want to come out. Where you go, Mike? Remember that? Oh, Mr. Eddie? Oh, good night. <laughs> Counselor? If y'all started the meeting, I can't hear because it's muted again. Terrell, can you hear him? No, I can't. I can't hear him either. It I looks think, like I don't, I don't think they've started yet. He's usually really punctual on noon. Yeah, they're muted. Mr. Yule, this is Sonny. I've hit the ask to unmute button. It looks like you're unmuted now. Can you say something? Yes, test, test. Can you hear us? We hear you now. Thank Hello. You. Okay. We need we need uh, one more minute. We got one more member to, uh, that'll be here in just a minute before we'll have a quorum. Yep. I think I hear him coming. Yeah. Come on in. I'm waiting for a month to get a hold of the guy, and you might know I sit down and my phone rings at him. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, this is the advisory board meeting for the month of April, and uh, we're very happy to have our advisory board members here, which is Melissa, John Browning, Wayne McClain, and me. And we have Dana online, and I think that's it so far. We might have a few scragglers come in, um, but uh, we've called the meeting to order. Uh, we're very happy to have our mayor with us today by way of Zoom. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for being here and being our new liaison. Uh, very much appreciate you and your hard work. And um, I think what we'll do is just go around the room for a minute and let everybody introduce themselves for um, the sake of our new um, guests. Uh, this is our, our meeting and the city we serve is represented by council and also with the mayor. And I assume maybe Mr. Holmes is zooming in, maybe not. Um, so we'll start and start with Melissa. Maybe you can introduce yourself and tell us what you do. And we'll just go right around the room to everybody in the room. And that way everybody knows everybody. So Mr. Mayor is well in, in the group. 
So my name is Melissa Miller. I'm Senior Vice President and General Counsel at St. John's River State College. And thank you for your service, ma'am. You're welcome. Valeria Bland Thomas, I'm the City Attorney for the City of Philadelphia. Thank you, Ms. Thomas, and thank you for being here. Hi, I'm John Branning uh, <clears throat> with the Goodman Company and various uh, interests in Philadelphia. I'm uh, Wayne McLean, Beck Automotive, Mayor Hill's favorite senior citizen. Not anymore. You just told me I, would, <laughs> I, I just saw another email where you had a favorite attorney now, so you're back to number two. <laughs> <laughs> John, you airport manager, and before we keep going here, how is the uh, voice quality, Sonny? It's okay. Just a Anybody? Heads, you do have a... a sign that says airport advisory boards network bandwidth is low. It started happening when you started moving the camera. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> but just let everybody know, please speak up because we have low bandwidth because of the fiber optic cable was cut. We're operating on a hot spot right now. Thank you, John. Lauren Shanks, finance director for city of Palaka. I am new to the city of from Flagler County, and, and I am from Palaka originally, so for me it was returning home whenever I started. Well, glad you're here. Welcome back. Yes. Oh, Rick Cunningham just attended here at the airport. Just attended. We're glad to have. Well, you. we're glad to have you just attended. <laughs> yeah, we just here once. Yeah. Real There you say you can pick your chair anywhere. Oh, yeah, I'll sit wherever I want. You can sit by the pretty lady. I don't want to step too close to John Brown in the yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm on uh, Matt Singletary, Pass Road Associates for engineering consultant for the airport and the city. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for all that you do for us. Sure, no problem. Jonathan Griffith, General Services Director, City of Blackman. Mr. Holmes. Don Holmes, and I'm not sure exactly what I am. But <laughs> 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 all right. And sir, would you like to introduce yourself? Katie hey, Cutler, Community Affairs. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, welcome to everybody, and uh, it's a nice group, and we're here to celebrate and serve our city and our airport, and we thank you for everybody's interest. Before I make a comment, we need to approve the minutes of the airport advisory board meeting on February 3, 2121. So do I have comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, I want to just start with a, a little quote. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Kind of. Hang on, hang on. I plugged this in and it took the Zoom away. I got a briefing I uh, need to give here. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. This is Sonny Krantz. May I have who made the motion and second for the record? Yeah, motion. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Wayne McLean made the motion second by John Browning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I have a quote from Woodrow Wilson that um, surely uh, represents what the advisory board does here, as well as each of you that are in this room. You are not here merely to make a living. You are here to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world and you impoverish yourself if you forget the errand. And I thought that was a very appropriate little quote that kind of defines our, our giving spirit and our serving spirit that we enjoy sharing here. And thank you to each one of you for what you do. It's very important for us to remember that this airport has been a beautiful picture of success. Although we don't make a lot of money for the city, we've sure grown from being a little nothing to a beautiful, beautiful facility, uh, beautiful people. John, you've done a beautiful job. Uh, hey, hey, you Mr. folks, you just on your shoulders. We sure He's appreciate it. He, well, he kind of is. I know. I know. Sometimes you have to look with one eye. But no, you know. not. Pick on me. Please. <laughs> But we're very grateful for, uh, for what we have become. And John and I were talking a little earlier. I was hoping to join him at a city workshop tomorrow night. And I double booked and 
have to repent and apologize to the mayor for not being able to, but we have a 22,400,000 improvement since 04 on this property. And 98% of the money has all been given to us for free. So we have a 22 million, you can pass that around if you like, that uh, the airport advisory board has been part of helping direct Matt, your company, Pastoral Associates, has just done a beautiful job in helping make us what we are today. And as we look forward, we've, um, as an advisory board, working with the city and the commission, we've seen, uh, we got a lot of dreams, got a lot of plans. And, uh, you know, we've also been uh, looking for 20 years for big money visitors, big money tenants, uh, growth uh, at our airport beyond what we have. And we've been very honored to have a guy by the name of Mr. Morris frequent awfully often here lately. I ride by every weekend and I call John and say, John, I see that jet out there again. And I believe it's like eight out of the last 10 weekends we've been privileged to have a celebrity here. And it's very, very nice. And uh, he's getting to be more and more frequent of a visitor. So, you know, when we think about the new name for the airport, we might think about something that has to do with Bass Capital in the world and Bass Pro Shops, or I don't even know, but, you know, it's, it's really a good thing to see that. And then there's been some other jets here lately too, John. Yeah, uh, coming on Mr. Morris, I met him at the airplane one day and said, well, welcome back, Mr. Morris. He said, it's a very nice place to be welcome back to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I think he's got liking us. Uh, Thank you, sir. A couple other people. We had the, uh, the uh, uh, CEO of Under Armour flew in last week on a, on a uh, Falcon 20, which is a large business jet. Um, and also the people who bought the uh, big building in the uh, uh, the old Florida furniture building uh, that uh, deal in helping humanity <laughs> uh, have been flying in. And they've got the Challenger 601, which is a huge uh jet and i asked him is it, is it charter they said no no they own it that's the marijuana operation marijuana. <laughs> he was a lot of the work went around there he wasn't uh, saying that he <laughs> 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 calls him like he sees him doesn't he <laughs> did they buy a lot of fuel they did they did they buy they did they buy six and seven hundred uh it's very credit card oh i guess that's a good point uh, it's very nice to have all these guests. And then you have some others, too. Somebody that went up there, right? With, uh, some lady? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody came down. Uh, uh, yeah, from Missouri. Flew out from Missouri. I'm not sure if she's friends with Johnny Morris, but she flew out in a jet by herself. And I think a group brought her uh, just to go turkey hunting. Turkey hunting. Well, <laughs> John, who is the uh, businessman at the end of the airport that flies to the Virgin Islands all the time? Uh, his name is Jeff Nations, and he owns, he owns a, he building, a lot the old CD building over there, and he bought a large tract of property. He's in the process of moving uh, uh, his uh, refinery and power plant pipe business up from St. Croix to here, and there's a lot of activity going on over there, and he's also rented this uh, old terminal building. Uh, he, he, owns five, he owns five airplanes. Here's a little write-up on him. They're, uh, they're smaller airplanes, not, uh, not jet, but he, he flies back and forth on a jet. Uh, he has families. Yeah, he charters a jet. Maybe he'll buy one one day and maybe build a hangar over there on that side. Oh, I know he's building a lot of stuff over there. And I've told him, uh, we've told him about the property just across the parking lot. Great, him man. would be available for him if he wanted to build That's awesome. you know, a hangar and then get a, a clicker to be able to drive through the fence and off to the house. Well, John, thank you for all you do to welcome no, no. all these people. And uh, it's really a wonderful thing to see starting. Um, like, like Johnny said, it's a good place to welcome people to. I like that. I do. We think the same. Yeah. And uh, as we see this beltway finish from here to the north, I'm sure we're going to have even more mm -hmm. uh, that um, whether we want it or not, it's, it's on its way big time. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Um, I think that kind of finishes up my comments. Is there any public comments at this time? All right, well, we'll just go right into the airport update.
And John, we'll start yeah. with you in the division court. Maybe you should just talk about it, huh? Uh, well, without the slides, uh, yeah, you might lose we're, 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 Yeah, if that, if that does kill the bandwidth. I can briefly speak to it. It's called the business brief for April. Are you going to be? Are we off of Zoom now? Yep. Hey, Sunny. Hi. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Um, allow. Yes. Can you allow us to share our screen? Oh, um, it's, just not. it's not restricted. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be a ban. Well, he might. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we can see the presentation. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll just page page you the next one before I mess something up. We're looking good. The, 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 the slides kind of speak for themselves. Operation last year a little bit up. Sales, which next next slide. We are have sold for one hundred low net, and we sold more. Jet A, back in the other one, the back up. I think so. Nope. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's That's okay. Jet sales are up as well. <laughs> jet sales with all these jets coming here. Are they fueling here or are they fueling other places? They'll do. They'll do both. Sometimes they'll so bring enough fuel to where they don't have to buy fuel, but. Um, and, then, and and they'll also buy a, a hundred or so gallons is cur what they call courtesy fuel instead of a so seven hundred gallon what, load. What was our fuel last year and what is it this year? Uh, uh, can we it had can, up can we back up? I think it'd be well, I think we need that. Mr. Chairman, it's 100 gallons a piece. That's all that is. So, by courtesy fuel. Excuse me. I think it's something we need to talk about. No. Pick that way up with the amount of times they're flying in and out of here. Thousand gallons in a month is nothing. Mr. Yule, this is Ms. Krantz. Can you hear me? We lost you. Are we, are we back? We're going to abandon the uh, business briefing. Thank you. Can you hear us? Did you hear that? Yeah, why are you abandoning that? Why, why, why is the briefing being abandoned? Oh, we're not. He didn't mean that. Yeah, it didn't mean we're going to abandon it. What are we doing? We're not. Uh, well, you're just not going to use the video. We're not going to use the slides. Yeah. Close those out. Because he can't use the slides and maintain the view. I mean, the uh, the Zoom because of our decreased bandwidth right now, based upon the fiber optic having been cut. He's operating off of a yeah. turbocharged hot spot spot or something of that nature. So that's that's the, that's the challenge we have right now with the zoom at the airport i think they're trying to figure out who cut it and where and we've already authorized i think the county and we are joining in the expense of optic cut is what i'm talking about in the meantime we've gotten uh turbocharged hotspots that are helping to keep john going but you know they don't 
they're not a full substitute for the fiber optic. So that's what we've got going right now. And then we've got the wonderful world of Zoom to deal with. So let's just abandon 4A for a minute till John gets his uh, uh, his slideshow printed out and we'll go to 4B. And Matt, maybe you can speak a little bit. Um, thank you again for the hard work. And um, Kyle is normally on with us from FDOT and I didn't see him up there. Um, Kyle, are you here? Mr. Chairman, if he if he sends the if Mr. Yule will send the slide to Ms. Krantz, she can actually show it on her end, and it shouldn't affect your bandwidth. Okay. Okay, we'll tell him that when he gets back. Uh, but in the meantime, mm -hmm. Kyle, if you'll speak, I I don't know exactly what format you have, but if you can just speak without a slideshow and give us a little update on the five-year capital projects. Okay. And you might want to come a little closer so they you, can hear you. You can sit, John. Sir. Sure. Um, so we have listed in the, uh, in the handout today what the recommended capital improvement plan changes are uh, this year, which was... I don't have it. Well, I've got it printed out on the um, agenda, but is this is this it? That is it, correct. It's in tape table format. So basically, what this list is just uh, changes that we're recommending. We wanted to quickly go over with you. Yeah, there you go. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Sonny. So the, the first one listed there, runway nine, run up apron. Um, that is a runoff apron for the runway nine for planes taking off. We had discussed this project and it was planned to go into the taxiway A job, which is going to go into construction later this year. Um, the FAA was somewhat opposed to it because of it would have needed discretionary funding, FAA discretionary funding. So what we're proposing here is we've, we've taken out of the taxiway A project, but because we kind of agree there is a desire and need to have it, um, we could get it back potentially through uh, entitlement funding with the FAA, which the airport receives $150,000 entitlement funding every year. And uh, we don't see this being any issue as far as taking away from any other projects that we need that funding. And it's not, it's not allocated for anything other than this potentially right now. So that's kind of that project. Um, what was the total cost of that project? Uh, so a little, a little over $300,000. I, I can't say exactly, it's probably three, three fifty. So we have the 300 from the FAA. That would be 90% of the total. Um, then the DOT typically on a FAA project, we'd have the DOT, um, and the city splitting the, the other 10%, or it could be a, um, 8%, 2% in this case, since it's a non-revenue project. And I don't mean to belabor the point, but it it says that we can we're entitled to 150 per year. Correct. But so you you'd have to have two years of funding from the FAA. That's correct. So yeah, you you're kind of covered. well. It says right there FY 22 23. So that's the entitlement years we're talking about. Sonny, can you move the pictures uh, someplace where they don't obscure the screen? Just there you go. There you go. That's that's great. Thank you. Or Lauren did it. Thank you, Lauren. But that's correct. Yeah, it would be two years of FAA entitlement funding. And then we'd still have a $50,000 match to come up with between the city and DOT? Right. So 2% of that would typically be the city share. 2% 2, 2 of the total, I should say. 20% of the 50 if that's the total cost. Yeah. Anything else on, on that project you want to... And John can speak to it more. He was, he's one of the big proponents of the run-up apron. Um, and we have discussed the need for it with uh, a lot of flight school training um, happening with a lot you know, of peak hours, a lot of planes taken off at once and uh, the need for them to get off the taxiway so larger jets or other aircraft could get by and they're not clogging up traffic. So that's kind of the idea. But the next project um, extend runway 927 to 7,000 feet. That's a project that's been in the JSOP capital improvement plan for um, a pretty long time. I'm not sure how many years, but it just kind of has been deferred several times and that's kind of what we're looking at doing here. Um, it would be a great project for the airport if it ever was realized. 
Um, so it's a good idea. We would recommend to keep it in the CIP and defer it again, unless there's some reason not to go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead and then I'm gonna have a question. I, I got one. So that, anyways, that's, that's, okay. that's kind of the idea. We don't wanna take it out of the CIP, yeah. but this would allow the funding that's allocated in that fiscal year 26 to be used for something else that may be needed now, which the door, um, without getting into the next one, but the reallocation would be to move it to uh, hangar, door, and roof. Um, but go ahead. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, as you know, I've been on the minority view of this for several years that, um, and I think what I'm seeing now with the jets coming in and the increase, that I, maybe I wasn't totally wrong. I just see this as more of a priority for us to extend this runway for what we see coming down the road. And we don't, if we wait to 2029, that's way too late. Mm -hmm. Never start, right? Well, I, I would just say you could, it is so far out, even in 2026, you could adjust the CIP. If, if something came about where it would, there's a need and you could actually get it done and the funding would be provided because you actually can justify the need for it then uh, it could be slid back up. So but it really doesn't. As, a, as, a, as, as an old pilot that doesn't fly anymore, though, I can tell you if it was in the JSEP that I had a 7,000 foot runway, that's going to catch my attention. And, you know, and I just think with what we've got facing, I just don't agree with this being so far down the road. That's just my two cents. Mr. Brown? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with him. You know, Goodman doesn't like to fly in here. Because it can land, it's really hard on the tires. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it smokes the whole thing when mm -hmm. it lands. It's just not, and if there's one thing that we ought to be doing uh, is extending that. And if you look, number three, you're taking money out of the extension of the runway to redo the doors. I think that's all backwards. I think we've got to do the extended runways, and we need to find another way to repair the doors and to take it off the extension on the runway. I just, I mean, you got to run up. Look, we're not that, we're sitting here. How many planes have taken off? If you were at a big airport, I'm sitting here watching, there's been three planes. Okay. So this, this runway apron is not as big a deal as to go ahead and do it. I'd rather keep that money and let's use it to do the hangers if we want to. If we got the money, 150,000 and figure it over three years, Let's use it and get the hangers looking good. Well, that can't be used for hangers, so that's, yeah, one problem. that's the whole problem. Yeah. Can't be used for hangers. I, nothing can be used. For, it seems, I, I won't say, it just seems like we find a way to use some of this stuff for all kind of things. But I don't think taking it away from the seven thousand foot runway should be our top major thing out here. Should be to get the runway longer. I mean, I just, that'll bring us to world. And if we have it up there, then we go to DOT and we go to the feds and we say, look, our number one project is a 7,000 foot runway. I'm not saying they'll fund it, but when we tell them, well, yeah, we want that to be done in 2029. Are you kidding me? We're going to have, we're going to have electric cars by 2023. They're going to be, no, that's way the heck out there. All right, well, listen. So with the potential of the stimulus dollars coming down or, or any CARES Act funding, would it be beneficial to keep the extension prioritized and kind of ready to go in case we get an influx of dollars that we're not, we haven't anticipated in the past? But that, Mr. Chairman, yes. but I think, Melissa, though, they look at our, I mean, they look at our plan and, and, and they say, if they look, they, if I was sitting in Washington or wherever, I looked down and said, well, you know, the city and the airport doesn't think it's a priority. No, Why I said do we keep think it, it's a priority? Keep it prioritized. I'm okay. sorry? Keep it prioritized. Keep it the number one. Yeah, That's keep right. it prioritized. But DOT, what they do is he sits up there and they look at all the projects, all the airports, and they don't have enough money to do them all. So they pick and choose and we'll take it from this one this year and we'll do to that one next year. But if you don't have it right there, where that's the first thing they see, man, you can just, you might as well not send it. So 927 is 5,000 feet now, is it? Um, 6,000 6, total threshold to threshold, I guess is less. So you're adding 1,000 feet. That's quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Which is huge for uh, mid-sized jets. Yeah, that's a fantastic. Huge. 
and you've got room in terms of uh, there's not any impediment. Yes, there is. There is. Yeah. What's the impediment? It, it, the power lines isn't that an impediment yeah. on it? Uh, for seven thousand feet, I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent sure. I if thought it was last time. It's getting about. close. It's getting close. But that's, I think that is part of it. I do believe you're correct. Oh, we go ahead and plan for it. It's not going to get any easier. Well, I'm just trying to find out. You're right. You're showing six hundred thousand. I guess you're showing six hundred thousand to to extend the runway a thousand feet. Is that accurate? No, that's. Not, I mean, you'd be, it'd be more than that for sure. What, what are we talking? That's just the money that the FDOT has allocated for this project in that year. Right, what the total is project the cost? cost, I really have no idea. It'd be a million, it'd be very expensive. Yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of the, the just the reason that it keeps getting pushed back. Is, 10 million. My understanding is 10 that. Million? So you go 1,000 more feet? No, 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 no. You go to 10,000 feet. You're never going to get the funding 10, for the project. The 10,000 foot. I think, there's a lot of extra conversation going on, so we can't really make it out. Thousand feet. The ten thousand. They just said the ten thousand foot runway was ten million. Ten million. But we're not talking about the ten thousand foot, as I recall. To go a thousand feet, we don't have to move the power lines. Is that not correct, John? He's yes. motioning yes. You can't see it. So we do not have to move it for the thousand, but yes, you would for 10,000. Well, that's what I was just asking. I, I was trying to understand what major impediments you might incur in extending the runway. I thought it was 2,000, but you're saying it would be a thousand. Just trying to understand that a little bit yeah. so I'd know what Pretty other. Hard other issues are involved other than just money. I mean, moving power lines is a deal. And, and so if it's environmental, then that's a deal. And that's what I was just trying to figure out is, is it just a matter of, of, the, of, the, of clearing and, and putting down payment or are there other hurdles to overcome to go another thousand feet? And, I, and that's gotta include, of course, your approach zone and all that good stuff. Too, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a what? good money. Uh, I don't know. The it sounds to me like the first thing is to figure out what we're talking about yeah. doing. Yeah. I, I think, Mr. Chairman, yes. what, what Wayne said is where we're at. Our number one priority, I, I think, should be to extend as far as her to 6,000 feet. Seven. I mean, seven, from 6,000 to 7,000 feet. And that should be anybody that picks it up, whether it be the feds or the state, when they look at what we need the most, that's what they see. So is the extra 1,000 feet, and I'm, all my, everything I've ever flown has been like, like I'm not having a flown with Gulf Stream. Sat in Goodman's Gulf Stream once. Long but long but uh, <laughs> my question is, is 7,000 going going to be a significant difference yes. in terms of the aircraft Grand, that can land here. In land, it'll be a lot of, really, it's, I mean, they can do it. It's a good way, but man, a thousand feet more. With it's, it, it, even on your Lear 65s and so forth, it's huge for them. It just doesn't wear out the equipment as much because they don't have to hard brake. Hard yeah, power up. Us into, um, Boeing, Boeing territory. Into, Gulfstream and Lears. What would seven thousand? Seven, seven, no, certainly eight, <laughs> certainly eight, you know. Come out seven, right? Yeah, but then we need to, from my perspective, if you guys want to make it a priority, we need to be certain about what yeah. what the distance, you know, how, how much runway you're looking at. Um, whether it's seven or eight, nine hundred or whatever it is, there's a big difference between seven and eight, nine hundred. Yeah, I think it was originally in the airport master plan that we did. Yes. Okay. And it was in, it's in our plans. It's in there now. Yeah. What for, we're for talking some. about is do we move it out? Is that what you're talking about? Move it mm -hmm. further? In other words, tell them we don't need it right now. We're glad to do it. Or do we try to move it uh, up? Yeah. yeah, and I and I, I hear you. Yeah. But yeah. Judge's paper says 10,000 feet. John says 8,900 and you're saying 7,000. I'm just, just trying to figure out right what here. we're talking about. And I think that's a fair question. That's a good question. We can leave it as it is, and then if we wanted to in future years change yeah, that, we what, could. That's so, not what Don's asking. All He's saying, what is it? <laughs> what I'm saying, what is it? What are we talking about? Are we talking about seven, eight, nine hundred, or ten thousand? 
I think it's fair. Well, this is 7,000, because I mean, that's what it says. But I don't know which, that's the question. We talked about them all. You know, and when we that's in our proposed and some real projects, we went from 10 because we were going to Yeah, so the scope that's in JSIP is 7,000. Yeah, that we might could get. So I know we went to the 10, and that did take the power lines underground. But I, we've talked about many options over the years. So maybe we need to zero it down. Isn't, Mr. Chairman, isn't that in our plan currently? Yes, right yes. That's yes. in our plan. Yes. We don't have to come up with so redoing good. it. We have 7,000 feet in our plan. It's just a matter of when we would like to have it. You can ask for all this stuff when you get it. And so... That's why I was asking the questions. I agree. Is it seven that gives you the big incremental advantage, or do you have to go out beyond seven to get the big incremental advantage? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm not trying to weigh into whether you move it up. I understand the value to moving it up. Certainly I do, and I understand what you're saying. Uh, if you make it more attractive for the big guys to fly in, then they're more likely to fly in. And, uh, and that may be something big in the future in terms of, are trying to expand from the county and city perspective. But uh, I just think that when you try to move it, if you're gonna put it as a priority, it would seem to me that when you try to sell it or when you start justifying it, you know, it's, there's gonna to have to be an element of what incremental advantage you get by the distance that you're trying to add. And so that's all I'm saying is, I think it's really important to hone in on what that distance mm -hmm. needs to be in order for you to get your biggest bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. Once you start this project, the difference between 1,000 and 500 feet is not going to be monumental. I mean, 1,000 and 1,500 feet. Um, 800 may be 10,000, but obviously it beats. You know, if, if, if we go to seven and then they say we're, we're, we're always behind the power curve. I agree, I keep pushing it. Yeah, my so, so I, all I was asking is, has there, have you, have you, have you guys looked at it hard to find out where your, your break point would be, where your big bang for the buck well, is? Or, we haven't brought it up in two right. years. I, I thought we did when we did the master plan, but Don, to your point, it probably needs to be revisited. Yep. I think so. Can I make a comment? All these questions. Yes. Go ahead. Chairman. No, I'm not chairman. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. And if y'all have already covered this, I'm sorry, but it's hard to hear on our end. Um, many years ago, when we put this in the plan, we were looking at an extension, I believe, of 9,000 foot runway. And that's what created the impediment of the power lines. But to Don's point, isn't there some room between the seven and the nine? You know, maybe we should be looking at what, what, is possible, 8,000 or 7,500. We might as well put the largest impact for the little bit of difference. And we will do that. We'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. And between now and then, we will have some recommendations. St. Augustine's longest is 11,000, isn't it? 8,000. St. Augustine's? Oh, it's 8, only eight? Yeah. Can I there's a missing. Yeah, I mentioned the reason we haven't done this yet is because there's no documented need to extend the That's runway. Missing. Otherwise, we could have gotten equation. funding and we could have extended it. And True. I think, and this is Unless we're in history a little bit because we we went through this on the master plan with documented need, but it got. Yeah. Four years ago, yeah. but I I'm with Don. Let's. Let's see, could 8,000, do we need to move to, I mean, let's see what impediments on each, to move it 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, whatever. Let's see what it takes and, and estimate of money and time and what we gain. So, and, and keeping in mind, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe St. Augustine's 8,000 or something like that. It is. Is it 8? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, so, well we, we would love to take steel. Well, yeah. I think John had a point, and I, he got over it. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to stand up. I just wanted to say this came up at the recommendation of DOT. 
Uh, they wanted to move it out past that seven year mark because they hadn't seen any progress on this project. <laughs> so if it's the consensus of the board to leave it there as a priority in 2026, that's fine. We can tell DOT that. I think the conversation you're having now merits some additional follow-up when there's probably some more time to talk about what Don was getting at, 7,000 versus 8,000 versus okay. 9,000. I just wanted to say this no. came from Kyle. DOT was saying we need to move these types of projects seven years out if we haven't seen any progress. Okay, so take good, a good point, John. Which DOT? Florida Department of Transportation. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and so in, in light of that, and with the recent jet activities that we've seen, we can probably move it up a little bit and we can discuss that some more mm -hmm. as we go forward. And, you know, if, if, the, if we feel like we'd like to do that, then I think we should re talk to Kyle yeah. and see if we can. I'd like to have that discussion once we get our facts together. Thank you. All right. Did, did anybody else have a comment? I think. Ms. Thomas, we no. kind of beat that one to death. <laughs> we beat that one. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, Where do we Wait, is there anybody else you want to talk? I mean, uh, is there anybody else you want to I'm sorry. Mr. Chair, are you, are you, he took <laughs> over your job. Too. It's okay. I, need a lot of that. I can't help it. I, I can't help it. <laughs> well, so the, the, the next line item is would go away if, you, if we, we just agreed that we're not going to defer that runway funding from year 26 to year 29, then the next line would be deleted as well because that was contingent upon that happening, which was we've had lots of discussions on the need to rehab some of the older West hangar doors and roofs is what that is. And then the last one is simply uh, to put into what the FDOT calls their outer year. So they're looking at their six year work program. Um, so every year you have an opportunity to add projects in the outer year, which would be 2027 right now. Um, and so this is just penciling in uh, another hangar project. So the FTOT hopefully can allocate funding in that year um, kind of generically right now. Um, and then once it gets closer, you could further define what kind of hangar building you want that to be. And how many? There's really no scope to it. It's yeah, just really it putting good. money in that year so that you have it there to do something. Just yes, sir. what the DOT does, they have a five-year work program. And that's what they, every year, they have to justify. Did they fill that five-year work program? Did they do it? This is what people wanted and why. If you put anything out of the five-year work, they don't have to do anything. It's, right. it's just a thing. So anytime we can keep our request within the five, what would be the five-year work program, DOT is going to be required to look at it. Does that make sense? That when they're doing their budget, they get everything in the five year and some things will move out of the five year, could be a delay in a project, could be other things will get moved into the five year. But I recommend we keep for our wish list, and that's what this is, we keep as much within the five year work program as as much in the five-year request program as we can. So let me just clarify. We're not talking about moving money out. We're not giving money I know away. What you're okay. Yeah. Just talking about what they're going to look at what every airport wants mm -hmm. in the next five years. That's really what they're going to do. And then they have to fill it. Every district does. And then they have to justify it. Blah, blah, blah. So to your point from the very beginning, let's, Put it. Let's don't take any money out of that program. Let's move it to the top, and then we'll we'll figure out how long. But I mean, we don't have to do it today, but we should get it to them quickly. They've already done five-year program has been approved, signed, and gone to the legislature this year. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing now is for July one. They don't do any more money to them. So Matt, I had a question. State, state. Sorry. Uh, I had a question too that may be not very intelligent. But um, so I was under the impression that all of our FDOT money came from airline ticket sales and the tax on them, mm -hmm. and or maybe it was. It's not right. So where does that money come from? Well, it comes from from uh, all the revenue comes in from the state, and part from the federal comes. Most of it comes back to the state, 
And then they have the federal money, they have money also, but because it's a state gas tax and federal gas tax, state gas tax funds the roads, the highways, the bridges, uh, the everything, you know, transit, the whole works. And then the federal gas tax, they give, they take 10%, you used to take 50%, they take about 10% that they do, and then 90, hopefully, changes every year, comes back to the state, but that's federal, and they have strings attached of where you can use it. And so it is a big pot, and it is moved around. Everybody. <laughs> a lot of things to do. It's changing all the time. Actually, it's looking better right now. So they're getting money they didn't know they had. And the legislature is trying to see what it's going to be, and they balance the budget. Part of that is the DOT budget. So when you're talking about need, going back to the runway again, when you talk about need, who, who does that need have to be demonstrated to? I admittedly don't know all the details of that, but DOT, as far as typically- DOT, DOT state, DOT federal. Now the DISP- Well, the FAA potentially could be involved in that okay, project too. Of course, so that's, of yeah. course, of course. But uh, what I'd say, get them on there and then we'll have a meeting. I'll bring the guy down before he talks to him from Tallahassee. Was, there's more than one, but the guy over everything in Tallahassee or to do with airports will come down and already talk. He's glad to. We'll have lunch and y'all can pick his brain and we'll have him. So tell the question is, uh, you know, when you're justifying need, and uh, yeah, I'll admit it, I'm talking about it from a some sort of market stuff. Uh, are there people who even offer opinions about track more large jet traffic if you had a longer runway, whether it be because of your proximity for refueling or whether it be for whatever? Are there... Uh Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, this is Sunny. We can no longer hear you. And we've lost visual. <laughs> I don't think we're on their meeting anymore. I'm going to call their cell. They've come back, but they're still muted. Mr. Chair, you're muted. Um, what priority is the, the, the runway extension? I understand it's been pushed as a back burner for a long time, but back, I, back burner, I don't know whether that means it's just been pushed back and 
it, and it needs to be brought back onto the stove or it means that it ought to be number one priority. I, that's what I don't know. I don't know what the advisory board position is on I mean, that. We, we, we did it at the, um, the, the strategic planning session. And we, we voted. Sonny, do they need me as part of a quorum? We're asking the same, we're thinking the same thing. <laughs> That's just kind of pointless. If I'm not needed, I was going to. I'm not saying you, I'm just saying if the group, the airport, if it's political and the funding is gained that way, then okay. But otherwise, I think it goes back to that justified, documented need, which you have to have some kind of letter commitment from someone who's got a jet that requires I think we that link to runway. Together. We have to get our act together on what we want and then what let's, let's see what we do want and get it forward. Uh, thank you. John, let's come to your point, your agenda, sir. Oh, okay. Can you pick up? <laughs> oh. You may be able to. Can you bring up the uh, business brief? Uh, Mr. Yule, this is Sonny. I've not received your business brief. Hello, Sonny, can you hear? Well, that's true. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay. I've can not you, received your business can brief. You, can you upload the business? No. Oh. It, it might not come through. I, I, I sent it. I was wondering about the bandwidth. It goes through the same thing as this is going through. Okay. I'm trying to, can you stop, sir? I, I, I can't. Uh, I, I can't even hold it up like that. If <laughs> um, this is flight operations from October to February. Slightly better than last year. This is gallons of 100 loads. Lead sold. John, why don't you just talk to the thing? All right, a little bit of uh, significantly ahead on 100 load lead. Um, we're 19, 20, 21, about 1,300 gallons ahead on one on Jet A. Uh, fuel profit last year, same time, was 30,000. Uh, right now, we're standing at 41,000 profit on fuel sales for the same time frame. Rent revenue is, is up. From 28 to 36,000, uh, a uh, number of things playing in here. The old terminal building has been rented uh, the entire uh, fiscal year this year. Um, the uh, office building on the east end of the terminal is now rented uh, full time, and the rent increase kicked in in January that helped rent revenue come up. Um, and our total revenue, we're, we're looking better than last year. Last year, we we're basically even. Uh, right now we're fourteen eight ninety nine to the good on uh, revenue versus expenses, excluding debt service. Excluding debt, yeah, that does not include debt service. No, I just want to look at and uh, a capital improvement program. Last year we received it, uh, uh, with put in one million three hundred seventy one thousand. The city had a twenty five thousand dollar match last year. This year, we're anticipating $1,025,000, and fortunately, the city's $23,000 match for our uh, Taxiway Alpha project uh, went away uh, because of COVID. Uh, FAA is funding that project at 100%, so the city has no match this year. That's good news. That is good news. All right. The balance on our debt service, the loan payments, is uh, $434,000. That is uh, due to be paid off the previous debt of 163,000. That was, uh, um, I, I guess, a bump from the general fund uh, on years past. Did, did yep. you find the year by? 2013, there was a cash advance. Okay, 2013, there was an advance. Uh, pending airport improvement projects this year, the Taxiway Alpha project, we had the pre-construction meeting a couple of weeks ago. T is 
we're going to install LED lighting in the room. Uh, um, We're in the process of waiting for trim on the first row of T-hangers uh, as you drive out to the west. That's kind of the first eyesore you see is that, that white trim gotcha. on the T-hanger. So Good. that'll look better. And, uh, and if we can work through the big doors on the big hangers, uh, that'll make this place look a lot better as you head west. And then we'll move our way down to the next T row of T-hangers, next row of T-hangers. And then we'll get to working on the blue later. So if I'm coming in from the west, the ones you're talking about painting is going to be those on the first or going or going to the west? Yeah, going to the west will be the first. Okay. Okay. Some miscellaneous notes here. Uh, all hangers and uh, all real estate is rented. We have a new administrative operations assistant, Mr. Benny Manna. Um, our fiber optic cable was cut. Uh, Shell Aviation, is, aviation fuel is no longer in business. I don't know if you noticed our fuel truck. Our fuel truck now says Titan. We are now a Titan branded FBO instead of Shell. Shell is completely out of the aviation fuel business. That's the bad news. The good news is there will be absolutely no change in price or services. Titan has taken over, you know, lock stock, lock, lock step with what we uh, need. Uh, and what we need is a repair to our fuel truck. As you, if you notice, it's smoking. I think uh, there's a number four fuel injector that's leaking and uh, may need uh, profit. And we have a celebrity in our midst. Uh, well, I don't know if, it's, if the camera is up. This is a gentleman uh, by the name of uh, Art Billingsley. He houses his aircraft in the first hangar down here. And he has a they put out have to bring it down in the parking lot here and get the get the building in the cover. We're on the cover of Cessna Flyer magazine. He lives here Austin. Uh, he lives in Fleming Island. Lives in Fleming Island. Teaches their practical on him and how he got into aviation. Uh, in uh, anyway, uh, just an ambassador, yes, sir. Question for John mm -hmm. John, is our rent current? Yes, okay, so nobody special. Yeah. Uh, um, Skydive Palaka uh, owes us for um, what is this, April, March, uh, owes us for March. So we do, we do have yeah, a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have, we have all, all of your tea hangers are current. current. Yes. Good. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne. That's a good point. All right, John. Man, the email. Ask him. <laughs> Could we have some time in written out rather than doing? We're 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 taking in thirty thousand a month. No more than thirty thousand. Uh, we're spending. $29,500 a month in expenses. I would, so that we could better understand and be able to maybe give some ideas, could we get a, a printout what, for if it's of what those expenses are? It just seems crazy to me that we got all these hangers and all this stuff and minimal debt, and we don't make the $14,000 a year, and that's because we don't we didn't pay as much in expenses to the to the uh people personnel i, I just i just like to look at it, it just it never have figured out why we can't make so we're trying uh and, I, and hopefully that that is happening now but we're trying to to make sure that all of john's accountings are fed into the system that okay. everything else is fed into at the city and part of the the staffing that we've done and our criteria out here of okay. uh, the staff people have been someone who can input those okay. uh, so they go directly into the same system that the rest of the city uses rather than going on to a sure. spreadsheet yeah, which that has to be converted which would make it easier for uh, mm -hmm. Lauren to pull reports for you and so the answer to that question is yeah I mean it's public record and we can get you something in, in that well, regard. I, yeah, I just think it would be helpful to us when we're looking at things that we want to move forward 
we can kind of so analyze. So we'll put that on the agenda too. For Rather than give me a sheet that's, I, I just. Oh, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. be able to provide a financial report. And you can even prepare our meeting and we don't have to do it. We can yeah. take a minute and read it. I'll have it. I'll have it to you before the next. Oh, that's fine. Not that's just beautiful. me. I just think. All right, we got two minutes, and we have a very important topic. Mr. McLean, I'm just going to let you speak. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And are we going to go past the airport appearance? Yeah, we're going to number D. Number D. And okay. That's the last time so, um, airport courtesy car, because I know that's been an issue with pilots. So I've um, I took it upon myself just to kind of call around and then I went and called a friend of mine who's heads up the port in Tampa to get some input from him about airports that are government owned FBOs and then ones that are privately held. And I, and this may not be popular here, but I understand why the government should not be loaning a courtesy car uh, out to pilots because of the liability that an entity, a government entity had. Having said that, what I found out and what I remember is there, if when that is the case, there have been um, a deals cut, and I mean that in a positive way, not a negative way, with uh, local uh, uh, leasing companies or car companies, and I'm excluding Beck, I'm not including Beck. So there is a new rental car company in town. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with them. So they're across the street from uh, the Beck Automotive Old Pick and Slave building there. So I have got I talked in and now he's older model cars they're not you know brand new cars mm -hmm. I've gone and talked to him he's very much open and having that discussion I'm sure we should also have it because of government entity with enterprise or anybody else in there. but I know this is again not popular because I want our pilots to have a car but I do see where the government should not be providing the car they show up in places they shouldn't and then then the city is held responsible I'm not an attorney and Ms. Thomas, who is an attorney, when we understand that's been a recurring theme over and over again. So Ms. Thomas actually has done some investigation oh, okay. and gone straight to the horse's mouth in Tallahassee. Oh, okay. Uh, and I, I'll leave it at that in terms of her conversations regarding our liability coverage. Then maybe I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. And also, Mr. Griffin and I have tried, been trying to um, my son, the millennial, gave me this idea about a zip car where they have these cars that are here and, and put online or mm -hmm. on the phone and everything, and they would pick up the car and they would bring it back, and that would be it. But it maybe would be a source of revenue for the airport to have a, um, a car of that nature here. And I was going to talk to Melissa about having maybe the college join us in having these zip cars around town. Just well, that's there. interesting that's because I've, I've wondered if we had got a rent a car place to give us a car or if somebody in this room wants to buy a car and leave it out here, by us getting the key out, no matter who owns the car, does that put us in the liability it's the third as party. the person that gave the key out? I'll let the attorney like answer the question. A, 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 you just zip around, you do, um, and they only charge you for the time that you use the utilize the car. It's, it's called a zip car. It's called a zip car. Yeah. Just that, that's just the name. Of I'm, I'm so old. <laughs> yes. She's also, she's coming up with her to try to get a definite answer on the liability issue. Right. Ms. Well, Thomas? Um, what I did was I talked to Matt Kelly, who was with. Yes, sir. Can you also? I need to talk louder. Can you also expound on the, the conversation with uh, Marcus Thomas from uh, Marcus Torrance from the United Auto Rental as well? Yes, sir. And um, please speak a little also, louder. Um, United... Okay. <laughs> I also spoke with um, somebody from United Auto Rental, yes, yes. and they are also, Mr. Uh, McLean spoke about them, that they are available to have vehicles here. Mm -hmm. um, they would pick people up or you know, bring the car and just leave it, then they would come back to the airport and pick the car up. We would not be a part of it. The government would not have any issues, um, because when I spoke to Mr. Kelly, you know, he says that as long as they were abiding by our policies concerning the usage and they had driver's license, insurance, at least a state minimum, but we could set it to a higher average, then they could be um, use the car. But if they um, did not follow our policy, 
then we would be held liable. But we wouldn't be known if they weren't following some policy until there was a problem. So wait, you, you mean the third party entity? No, no, no. She's talking no, about if we had. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got the just I'm sorry. Kelly is, uh, is, is the attorney, okay. senior attorney for the, the league. Right. Yeah. Okay. Our liability okay. insurance. I got you. And we've been trying to get a definite answer. She's been trying to get a definite answer. Are we covered? Are we not covered? And I've also talked to Mr. Lennon or whatever his name was yesterday. And I think that both Ms. Thomas and I got the same answer. And that was a definite probably. <laughs> uh, certainly no, I'm not. You know, no, definite probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. But we'd have to see what the circumstances were. If they were outside of your policy, then. But, okay. I very much, Mr. Chairman, I don't want my comments to be misinterpreted. I, we need a courtesy car here, but we just can't. I, my suggestion would not do it through the city, obviously, would be my recommendation. And that should not be excluded, sir. Uh, just because well, you. Uh, we don't do rentals, but I mean, there are some more options in our town now other than Enterprise. Yep. Enterprise, just for the record, I think Ms. Thomas had earlier spoken with them, uh, I guess. They said they didn't do short terms. That type, you know, like an hour, one hour, half a day, or anything like that. I love the zip car idea, and that would be very beneficial to our students. So, if it's a matter of getting more locations, mm -hmm. I would be interested okay. in that conversation. Okay, we are over, and we don't normally do that. Um, thank you all very, very much, and we'll put this back up in the for next meeting. Mark, it's been what? a great discussion. Yes, sir. Which one we got? That's the logo. Well, we're going to have to skip it, I guess, John. We're not changing it right now. Is no, right? we're not going to change it okay. before we talk. So we're going to have the Donald Duck logo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put so, a mask um, John, that logo we didn't like, and maybe he's got a new one. We're anxious to see it. Yeah, we're going to put a Bass Pro Shop bass in it. <laughs> but yeah, that may be. Madam <laughs> City Attorney, what do you think about that? discussions, plus you have to have naming rights and compensation, and and you know it's it's a big deal. Yeah, Matt, I don't. I, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. Mr. Mayor, I think it's just I'm me. leaving. I'm leaving Dana. So you. I think I am too. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. This is Sunny Kranz. You're muted. Mr. Chair, more well, I'm loving this. Well, we know, no, we just know that as all the things Ms. Thomas mentioned about going with a, you know, an affiliate brand based upon a corporate or, or likeness, that's just they're fraught with difficulties. Oh, yeah. So, for enough money, we could figure that out. Well, he ain't gonna give us some money. Yeah, for enough money, we might figure it out. But <laughs> back, yeah, I think Bass Pro's in the business of making money, not giving it out, from what I can see. Okay, well, thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Mr. And, Chairman. Uh, we'll stand adjourned and we'll talk you again in 30 days. Y'all have a good uh, rest of the day and the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we'll have a discussion now. We're all very happy.